it is my thrill to have at the Narrative Method tonight, Morgan Neville, an Academy Award, Grammy Award, and Emmy Award winning director and producer known for his work as a cultural documentarian. His acclaimed film, Won't You Be My Neighbor, one of my favorites, a documentary about Fred Rogers was released by Focus Features in 2018 and has become one of the best reviewed and highest grossing documentaries of all time. And it's about empathy. His 2013 film, 20 Feet from Stardom, won the Academy Award for Best Doc, as well as Grammy Award for Best Music Film. His most recent film, Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Bourdain, premiered theatrically in 2021 and was the highest grossing documentary of the year. Other films include Emmy winning Best of en Enemies about the debates between Gore Vidal and William Buckley, The Love Me When I'm Dead, the production of Orson Welles' final film, uh, Keith Richards' Under the Influence and the rock about the rock legend and the global music film, The Music of Strangers, Yo-Yo Ma and Silk Road Ensemble. He goes in every genre. Uh, Neville recently directed The Saint of Second Chances for Netflix, as well as Bono and the Bono and the Edge, a sort of homecoming with Dave Letterman, a docu special for Disney, and more, and so much more. Um, which is why I think his presence is a gift, because as each of us, not just here, but each of us humans, aspires to be inspired by brilliance and people who are both modest and knowledgeable and are willing to share the true stuff, that is a gift beyond anything to manifest our lives. So welcome, Morgan. I am so happy you're here. Thank you for having me, Sherry. So I wanted to focus on Mr. Rogers. Um, when he came out in 1968, I was a pissed off teenager. And I'm not bragging to say that I was too defended to even fathom the beauty that was being offered here. Um, it's really kind of sad. And I think we're seeing that so much nowadays when people distrust goodness, it's really sad. Um, but I guess what I wanna know, particularly because we're looking at the idea of of Wonderland and dreaming this week. How has, how had working on that project um, impacted your own sense of dreaming and imagination and what was possible? Um, well, from Wonderland to the land of make-believe, you know, that Fred, Fred's somebody who I, you know, I was a kid who was watching Mr. Rogers Neighborhood when it first came on when I was a very, very small child and loved it. Um, and then didn't think about him for 45 years. <laughs> so it was just something that was there back in my memory. Um, and somehow one day in 2016, I think it was, um, that I, yeah, it was, it was 2016 and somehow late at night surfing the web, I came across a commencement address that Fred Rogers gave and just something about it hit me in that moment of like, this is the most profound guy I've, you know, like I didn't perceive or I wasn't capable of perceiving the kind of the, the depth and uh, to who Fred was at the time, because I was a child, but and that Fred Rogers, you know, back then, even in 2016, was still a little bit of a cartoon character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He hadn't been reappreciated in the way that I think the documentary and other things have kind of led to, led to that. Um, and so I went down a rabbit hole of looking for other things of Mr. Rogers speaking. And this is kind of late at night, lying in bed. And I just kind of I was transfixed and I just had this thought of, oh, I've got to make a film about this guy, <laughs> you know? Um, and when I woke up in the morning, I turned to my wife and said, I think I need to make a film about Mr. Rogers. <laughs> and she's a children's librarian. And oh, she, was, wow. she said, I love that idea. Um, and so I 
started to dig into it and nobody had made a film about him. Nobody had really written a book about him. Nobody had kind of done this thing, but you know, I, I, um, I'd done this film with Yo-Yo Ma and Yo-Yo had been on the, on Fred Rogers show, Mr. Rogers neighborhood and had talked about him and Yo-Yo had actually learned a lot and has a lot of that Mr. Rogersness to him. And his son, Nicholas, who was my producer, became my producer on this because I called him and said, you know, you know, the Rogers family is the crazy idea to make a film about Mr. Rogers. And he said, no, I think that's a great idea. And I want to help mm. you. So we mm. flew back to Pittsburgh and met with Mrs. Rogers and basically said, I want to make a film about ideas because that's mm. really the world he he lived in. Mm. And um, and two things happen in the making of that film. You know, what I was saying to you earlier, Sherry, is that, that though I make films oftentimes about other people, I'm always investigating something about myself, you know, something I'm curious about, something that needs exploration or healing or anything. And, and you know, I often when I've sat down with somebody I'm making a film about, if they're alive, I'll say to them, you know, that making this film is gonna be a process of therapy. But if it's therapy for you, it's also therapy for me. And like, mm. that's that's the journey we have to go on together. Mm. And, um, you know, so much was kind of going sideways in our kind of broader culture and the politics of the time in 2016. And I just, you know, I just felt like, oh, this, this message of empathy, of profound empathy, um, was just something that needed amplification. It was something I wanted to hang on to. Um, and at the same time, shortly before I began the film, um, my mom passed away suddenly. Mm -hmm. And she, I told her I was making this film and she was so happy, you know, mm -hmm. and she was such a fan of Mr. Rogers. And in dealing with the grief of that, I couldn't have, couldn't have planned a better, um, kind of grief therapy than working with Mr. Rogers and his ideas for the year and a half we made the film. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the end of the film, if you've seen it, I kind of recreated this moment where Fred had asked people to think about somebody who had made an impact in their lives. And I asked everybody who I talked to to take a minute of silence to think. And when I did that, every time I thought about my mom and we... Mm -hmm. We would often talk about it. I even ended up saying it in the film and I dedicated the film to her. And so, so the film was both therapeutic for me dealing with my my grief, but also with the kind of the, the trauma of what was happening in 2016 and 17 in the larger world and kind of where's this message? Mm -hmm. um, who's putting this message out in the world right now of kind of profound empathy and understanding it was kind of the opposite was the message we were getting more often than not. Um, and then the film itself, you know, you make these things in a bubble and you don't know if anybody's going to care. And we had our first screening at Sundance and it was just, everybody started crying. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And everybody started hugging. Oh. And I hadn't anticipated that. I mean, I knew it was emotional, but it was just, it became something that was way more than what my film was. It became other people's films. And that's when you create art, when I've been lucky enough to have made things that people suddenly think belongs to them, not me. That's great. When people who watch a film take authorship of it or ownership of it and say, you know, you made this film for me or this film meant something really special to me. Like that is amazing. And this film did that again and again. And it just, you know, I can't tell you how many letters I got from people. It was shown in churches, it was shown in schools, it was shown kind of everywhere because I think people were hungering for that kind of message of, of empathy. And, you know, today still I'm, working on many things that are the descendants of having done this project, you mm. know, that I think it, it opened up a lot of doors in my own head about what I wanted to do with my own storytelling. Mm. So I'm curious, um, in 
working with him and dealing with what was going on politically and your mother's passing and you had young kids and just so much stuff. Um, did you have a sense, or maybe this is organic to you, why are you so empathic? And, and let me just say one thing, you know, anybody could shoot video of anybody and the content could be interesting, but it might not make you cry. Mm -hmm. So the way you cut it, the way you see it, the questions you ask, what made you this person who is empathic? I mean, part of it is my mom, mm -hmm. part of it is who I am, but I also feel like over the years, I've been making documentaries for 30 years, and I feel like my own, how my voice has changed over those years is I think in the beginning, I, you know, I was trained as a journalist and a historian, and I think I came into it in the beginning feeling more like I was recording history, you mm -hmm. know, and I was trying to kind of tell, tell stories that I felt needed to be told. Um, over time, I realized more and more that film, for instance, is a much more effective emotional um, uh, emotional storytelling than than um, factual storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, that that films are reductive and they're you're just trying to get the essence of something, and they're inherently empathetic. I mean, the whole idea of a documentary is that you're walking in somebody else's shoes. Mm -hmm. You're trying to see the world through mm -hmm. their eyes. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what my job is and has mm -hmm. been. And I I know, I just, at a certain point a long time ago, I started leaning more and more into kind of thinking about the emotion, the emotional story of characters and less about the factual story of characters. Because mm -hmm. the factual story, you can't, can't squeeze that many facts into a 100 minute film. But it also doesn't move you. You know, I mean, it's impressive, perhaps, but what moves you is something small and real. Like when someone here shares something, maybe they feel self-conscious about and other people nod. We're all better for it. You know, we're not alone to make people feel like they can identify with and belong to the story. It's... Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you one other story that was important for me along this line. Um, when I did the film 20 Feet from Stardom about backup singers, um, I don't think I even realized what that film was about until after I was done with the film. Wow. Something that happens sometimes. I mean, now I often talk to filmmakers or I think about the idea of, you know, what's your film about? And if they say it's about the this character or whatever, I say, okay, now what's your film really about? Mm -hmm. What's the, the idea under the idea? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with 20 Feet from Stardom, you know, it was about backup singers. So you think, yeah, it's about these women often from churches who found their voice singing and some of the greatest songs of all time, but, you know, their own journeys of coming to terms with not being a star, but being a supporting player and all that. Um, and I had this screening right after we finished the film at a film festival in Minneapolis. And a guy stood up and said, you know, I'm a middle manager at a computer company and I have a bunch of people to work for me, but I have a bunch of people that I work for and I don't always get the credit I deserve or the, or the, you know, attention. But I realized today that I'm a backup singer and that we're all backup singers. Wow. And everybody in the crowd applauded. And it was just oh, this moment wow. of like how, why that film resonated with people is because at the time I was also feeling like a backup singer, you know, oh. making films for a long time and kind of hadn't, you know, had great success. I was doing just kind of chugging away, but it's the kind of the, the appreciation for a job well done or for the craft or the things yeah. where you can take value from that rather than from external factors. That's so great. How important that is. And so now I think a lot about what is, yeah, I mean, if you're making a film about somebody, say they're famous or they're, you know, Mr. Rogers are like, well, what do I have to do with Mr. Rogers? But they're, in all these stories, there's something relatable about them, you know, something. It. This is 
a perfect place to to stop and first of all thank you so much for sharing so much beautiful content and feeling really appreciate you um i think you have to leave um but we are going to continue final right. final uh two words <laughs> No, this is great. I, I this is an amazing group you have, and and I I'll come back and please come back, please come back a million times and have a longer visit. That'd be great. We would love that. All right, lots of love to you.